Cowboys have always kind of been America's team, and, and here in this area, the Saints are the team that everybody cheers for. So, you know, if you're a fan of uh, NFL football and you like to watch NFL football, I personally do not like to watch NFL football. I think uh, I just love watching college sports and high school sports way more than professional sports at any level, not just NFL, but but NBA and MLB and all that stuff. You know, I'm just uh, – I think the college atmosphere to me is a lot better. But, you know, if, if – if the uh, NFL games are your uh, your cocaine, then uh, have have you some tonight? <laughs> yeah, you're you're gonna be able to shoot up a bunch tonight with uh, the Saints and uh, the Cowboys playing. Uh, gonna be a lot of offense, probably on the Saints side, but not so much on. Uh, so you're saying Prescott can't get it done? Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm saying that it's gonna be not. A pretty sight for yeah. for Dak. I yeah. mean, the Saints' defense is good. They they've done a good job. I just I think it's going to be ugly for the yeah. Cowboys tonight. Okay, fair enough. All right, so uh, it's Jimmy V week uh, on ESPN. Uh, the longtime coach, you know, that battled cancer. A lot of good basketball games. A lot of good championship games this week. So your, your football fix is going to be. Pretty good. Ole Miss basketball got a really big win. Yeah, they beat uh, San Diego State, who was five and one on the season uh, last night um, in in Oxford. So um, big win for uh, for Ole Miss, and then uh, Southern Miss bounced back with a win yesterday uh, after getting beat by William Carey. Yeah, my alma mater. <laughs> I was g- glad to see that. So go yeah. Crusaders, Steve Knight, man! What a great job he is doing at William yeah. Carey. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a big time program win. You know, you beat you beat a, a, t- a D one team like you know Southern Miss. Uh, I, I know they've struggled uh, here in the last couple of years because of some uh, issues that arose with uh, their former coach, who we will not name. I think he pretty much trashed that program with with some of the things he did. He, did. he was able to win with them, but he just cheated while doing he so. He cheated, and uh, that kind of put Southern Miss in, in some some tough situations and. Uh, but they'll bounce back. I think this yeah. year they're going to kind of outperform what most people think they will um, they will end or yeah. finish the season. I think they'll be a little bit better than, than you everybody's expecting. You look at expecting. Mississippi State, they're, they're on the tear too right now. I mean, they lost a game to Arizona State, uh, which Arizona State, you know, is not bad in basketball, and they've been there in years past. So they're 5-1, and one, going to be taking on Dayton on the road. And Dayton's a team that's always given – these Mississippi schools a, a little bit of a trouble. I remember yeah. Ole Miss playing them a few years ago, and Dayton yeah. hung around, you know, at the Pavilion. And so, uh, you know, basketball is really in the right direction in the state, you know, after a few years of not being so great. So, yeah. um, it's good to see that. And, uh, you know, finishing up in sports news, um, they say that Dan Mullen took, made a stop at West Jones yesterday, James. Now, if you're the head coach of of a big school in Florida, wouldn't you think that all you had to do would be recruit in Florida? Wouldn't yeah. you think that? Yeah. I did. I did some. I did some research. You told me we were going to be talking about this subject, so yeah. I, I went back and did a little research. You know, Tell it's always yeah. good to do a little research. You know? It is. Just don't want to shoot from the hip and not have anything right. to put the, put put the put bullets in the gun. But let, let's talk about 2018. Um, they were ranked uh, Florida. It's the first year. You know, uh, th- that signing class was pretty much on uh, Mullen there, his first year coming in there. And, and uh, he did pretty well, actually. He ranked 14th in the nation. They had 13 four-stars, 20 signees. Uh, nine of the 20 were from Florida. So I don't know if uh, that kind of goes with your theory, uh, can't recruit in Florida. Um, you know, you can say what you want to about it, but only nine out of the 20 are from Florida. Uh, then uh, this this current ranking class, they're ranked 21st. Uh, so far, they have nine four stars, 16 commits, and uh, half of those commits are from Florida. So, I think uh, I think Dan Mullins is kind of coming to Mississippi because he knows it pretty well. Yeah, that could be. Could uh, I know I know there's some players. Um, we won't name one of them, but uh, really really likes Dan Mullins as a coach, even though he's committed to Dan Mullins' former team, Mississippi State, but. Uh, I've read to where he, he really likes Dan Mullen. That relationship there is great. So could there be a flip-flop there? I don't know. You know, it, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, uh, 
you know, you know my thoughts on. <laughs> you're that still, guy. you're, st- you're still a little mad, ain't you? I'm still a little bitter about the way he yeah. left, you know. Yeah, but well, I mean, I think you got, uh, you know, I, we got a good coach. Like you got a good coach. You got a good coach. You know, he takes up for his team. I think both coaches, Matt, Luke, and yeah, and, and uh, Joe Moorhead, take up for their team. You know, I think Greg Sank, he's an idiot personally, but uh, you know, telling teams to settle down in a rivalry. I mean, hey, jo- hey, Greg Sankey, how about this? Why don't you get officials? That, that, yeah, I thought, you know, that, that, I thought that. I thought that release they did was was a little bit childish. Well, yeah, that I uh, just kind of can't seem to find the words to want to describe it. Just yeah, I mean, probably it, shouldn't say that on here, but I mean, I mean, they they said, yep, the, the referees made our, our SEC referees made some mistakes. They named those mistakes. Okay. And then they go back, and then they kind of pin everything on Mississippi State and yeah. all this, and then saying that, that that both of those schools need to get their house in order. In the same press release where they said, "Hey, we had some officials that made some pretty huge mistakes." Yeah. So it's like, why don't you get your house in order before you start telling other exactly. people that they need to get their just house? Just like in, order, in the so. in the Iron Bowl, you had a helpless receiver just get pummeled by a big offensive lineman after the play was blown dead. I mean. That, that's not right either. I mean, it goes back to officiating. You and, know, and I think I think the officiating this year has been pretty bad. Um, I mean, even the in, in Mississippi the game, State Alabama game, there yeah. were some very very questionable calls. Uh, you had Ole Miss that lost to uh, what was it Vanderbilt? That, yeah, uh, on a questionable uh, call. A couple questionable LSU calls. LSU lost to Texas A and M on a questionable yeah, call. Yeah, so I think the the SEC needs to kind of look at themselves rather than starting yeah. to point fingers at other people. I agree with you, Jen. We finally agree on the subject. How <laughs> about that? We need to well, mark that down. Mark that down on the yeah. calendar. Yeah, so the day's out, November 29th, so there you go, people. If me and James can, can agree on a subject matter, then you're doing good. Well, hey, again, thanks to Raising Cane's Flickish Tax Service and the New Look uh, Antique Salon Boutique Sassin Frass. Sassin, I'm going to get it right. <laughs> Tomorrow may be the day, but I'll get it right. We're going to be doing it live from New Look Boutique and having some donuts and hot chocolate. So it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. Uh, maybe a little warm for hot chocolate, but hey, who don't like hot chocolate? We're going to take a break and come back and talk about news. That's right. That caravan. Hey, you know, they started towards California instead of going up to Texas. Yeah. We're going to talk about that here in a minute, James. We'll be right back. Welcome 
back to Raising Cane's here in Laurel on 16th Avenue. We got a good box combo coming up, some sweet tea. We're right across from the Walmart. We're talking politics now. We've been talking sports a lot, yeah. you know, which, yeah. which is good. I'm which a is good. Guy. We're sports yeah. people, yeah. but also we like politics and we like to talk news. And you remember during the election? Yeah. You remember a, a certain bunch coming up from Honduras, Ecuador, all the Central American countries, a big caravan? Yeah. The national news media was saying, oh, we need to let them in. They're let law-abiding citizens, by the way. They're great, upstanding that. pillars of the community. There's a bunch of men, women, and children when it turned out to be mostly, just men. mostly men with bad criminal records. Yeah. Throwing rocks at uh, law enforcement officers. Yeah, at the border. Nothing says, uh, you know, law abiding citizen like a little rock throwing. A little rock throwing. Asylum seeker. Yeah, you know, stuff just come, hey, I could see if a, you know, taco vendor would want to come, hey, make tacos in the streets, you know, selling to people, trying to make a better life. But they're throwing rocks. They had a big horse that they hit in that they put up over the, the board. Did you see that? I don't think you were you were watching a a satire site there. No, I wasn't watching Mr. Ed, but uh, a friend of mine posted it on Facebook. It had a big horse that you could probably fit a thousand of them in. But anyway, instead of going up Brownsville, Texas, you know, which would have been an easier route if they would look at a map, they decided to go to California, who happens to be a sanctuary state, James. A sanctuary well, state, but now all of the caravans deciding, you know, this might not be a great idea. Let's go on back to where we came from. I think the the tear gas probably deterred some of them. The tear gas, you think? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What I what I enjoy is watching the liberal media blast Trump for you know his law enforcement offers using tear gas, but but forget the 500 or so times that Obama allowed it to happen on the border. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, really? Where, where, where was the liberal media then? You know, were they, they wouldn't blast an Obama no. for that. They were probably defending him. Oh, oh, it's not tear gas. No, it's, you know, and actually Republicans probably applauded Obama for that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just like pretty much everything they're bashing Trump on, you know, the, the border wall, the, you know, saying that we shouldn't allow illegal immigrants in. If you go back and watch Obama's speeches and stuff and, he was he was he was pretty much a Republican on this issue. You know? Absolutely. And and there was no there was no outrage now, but all of a sudden we have some fake outrage going on. Absolutely. So I don't know. It's kind of you know I don't know what to say about it, but you know if we're going to get anything done in this country for the good, you need to start working together, and that's for both sides. I yeah. And I like what Trump said, you know, he when he was asked uh, a couple of days ago in the media, you know, he said, hey, you know, we don't mind them coming in, but just come in legally. Um, he said, if you don't want to come in legally, we're not going to take you, but if you want to come in legally, we'll take you. So, you know, it's, you know, you got to be, uh, you got to be caring to these, you know, to, to those in need that, that, that need the, that are trying to flee from persecution or all that stuff, um, but most of these people, that that's, they're just, you know, that's, that's not what they're, that's not what they're looking for. They're just wanting to, you know, you, when, when you come to the border and you're throwing rocks at law enforcement officers, obviously you don't have good intentions in mind. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and I've got friends who, who came here uh, and know people who did it the right way, and they're hardworking people, you know. Most of them are. But when you when you do things like that, you need time for you to get on back. Yeah. So, all right, James, you got any weird news for us today? Uh, yeah, I did. I saw a story here that uh, it is a, a few months old, but I think it's uh, quite funny. Uh, stranded NYC poop train, they say. Okay. As uh, a small town in Alabama, <laughs> you ready for this title? Yeah. That has them stinking mad. <laughs> Stranded NYC poop train has a small town in Alabama stinking mad. Love okay. That, title. that is a good title. Yeah. Apparently a uh, train load of human waste uh, en route to New York City, which is a great place for human waste to go. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe we should load up the caravan and take them to New York City. Um, had to, had to, had to, you know, make a stop in Alabama, and they.